Never say never. That's a dumb phrase. You literally say never in it twice. Yeah, I know. I just did a video explaining why MLB will never expand again. But here's the deal. It actually makes plenty of sense for Major League Baseball to expand and not just eventually, but sooner than you think. Today, we're going to go into the reasons why expansion can and will happen. And I'll talk about the biggest barrier to expansion, the one I said would prevent it and how it will be overcome. Reason number one, the relocation slash stadium situation with the Oakland Athletics will resolve itself. Ditto for the Tampa Bay Rays, and both of those need to be solved before we can expand. The Oakland Coliseum is about as old as the Roman one. It's older than Stephen A. Smith's act. It's older than Betty White. It's older than Tree's take on the lightning. It's old, uh, oh yeah, expansion. There have been plans to build a waterfront stadium in Jack London Square, but because of greed and bureaucracy, that project has never really gotten off the ground. The A's have admitted that they're looking into relocation while the city drags its feet on a new stadium and attendance at the Coliseum dwindles. By all accounts, like their former Oakland roommates and both bachelors and bachelorettes, they're setting their sights on Vegas, baby. And the 2021 NFL season actually helps expansion. Last year, Allegiant Stadium was closed to fans. This year, they're opening the doors and filling the stands to capacity. The NFL, the Raiders, and the city of Las Vegas weren't able to see how devoted Las Vegans can be to their local sports teams. Is it Vegans or Vegans? But as troves of dudes from all over the world descend on Vegas for a weekend of strippers and some NFL, you'll see just how fertile this market is. Take the Las Vegas Golden Knights. In their inaugural campaign, the Knights averaged 17,892 fans per game. And just for reference, that's 103% of full capacity. Vegas, one way or another, is a major league market, and with the A's in a viable situation, it will clear a big obstacle for expansion. Now let's talk about those pesky Rays. On May 29, 2021, Tampa Bay Rays President Brian Auld told City Council member Charlie Miranda that a relocation to Nashville could be in the cards, although Auld did later refute Miranda's account of that statement, according to the Tampa Bay Times. Of course, why would a team executive ever lie about not wanting to relocate their team? According to all, the Rays are still committed to the Sister City plan. If you're unfamiliar with the Sister City plan starting in 2028, the Rays will play half of their games in Tampa Bay and the other half north of the border in Montreal. It's a plan that was conceived prior to the pandemic, but it involves a major leap of faith. Both Montreal and Tampa would have to build new outdoor ballparks, which sounds inconceivably dumb, and yes, I know what inconceivable means. You keep using the word. I don't think it means what you think it means. Wait, so if Oakland and Tampa Bay are just moving, then what does that have to do with expansion? Well, just take a look at this Rob Manford quote. For us to expand, we need to be resolved in Tampa and Oakland in terms of their stadium situations. As much as I hope that both Oakland and Tampa will get stadiums, I think it would be difficult to convince the owners to go forward with an expansion until those situations are resolved. Where did I hear that before? Oh, in my other video. Like I said before, expansion threatens relocation. So once relocation or a new stadium is built, the threat is no longer present and the MLB would be quite ready to add teams. And one way or another, those two problems will be eliminated. Reason number two, plenty of willing markets. So where are the new teams going to end up? Fortunately for the MLB, they'll have no shortage of available territory and cities that are willing participants. Let's just blow through a list of towns willing to house a Major League Baseball team if given the chance. You've got Nashville, Montreal, Vancouver, Las Vegas, Charlotte, Portland, Sacramento, Buffalo, even Mexico. Yes, Mexico. And throw Puerto Rico in the mix, why not? Shit, I'll just start listing towns if you want. Spokane, Poughkeepsie, Gary, Indiana, Pueblo, Colorado. Yeah, and this isn't speculation. This is coming directly from the horse's mouth. The horse being Rob Manfred, who mentioned some of those cities as potential expansion destinations back in 2018. MLB has faced a massive loss of revenue due to the shortened COVID season and lack of butts in the seats in 2020, but that doesn't make any of the target cities any less prime to support a new club. It just makes sense to tap into some of the growing metropolitan areas in the United States. In the 20 years since the MLB added the Rays and the Diamondbacks, the U.S. population has grown by 50 million. The greater Nashville area has grown from a population of 715,000 in 1998 to 1 1.2 million in 2021. Or take Buffalo, 
a city with just a fraction of the population of Charlotte. Buffalo initially struggled to support the Blue Jays when they first began playing games at Salem Field, which holds 16,000 fans. But in six of the last 10 games, 10,000 or more Buffalonians showed up to support a team from north of the border. They also had to initially overcome COVID restrictions, Andrew Cuomo, and limited capacities. Wait a minute, Salem isn't that big. Surely it's not going to cut it, right? Actually, it might, because it was planned that way. Salem Field was built in 1988 in the hopes of attracting an expansion team that never came. But it was designed with another kind of expansion in mind as well. Salem Field allows for the mezzanine to add an extra deck, which would boost the capacity from 16,000 to over 40,000 fans. 41,530 to be exact. That number would land them squarely in the medium of stadium capacities, right in between Wrigley Field and Nationals Park. Most cities would have to show that they're willing to build a new ballpark, but Buffalo already sort of has one. And along with Buffalo, Portland, Oregon has made no bones about their intentions of someday bringing a big league squad to the Rose City, something they have actively pursued since 2003 when they approved public stadium funds. Their plan is to build a dome stadium, because it rains a lot, and as recently as 2018 have submitted new renderings and designated a site. Even Russell Wilson and Ciara have invested. Baseball will eventually come to Portland, come hell or high water. Or it could go to Cuba after La Revolucion. Stay strong, Cuba. Finally, the last reason. Okay, let's get to the turd in the punch bowl, the largest barrier to expansion in the MLB. In April, Manfred essentially said expansion fees would run a prospective owner around $2.2 billion just to get the ball rolling. Now remember, this is cash that goes directly to the MLB before a pitch is even thrown. $2.2 billion is a big number, and it's certainly more than what Arizona and Tampa paid in expansion fees, which was $130 million back in 1998, and adds up to about $260 million in today dollars, accounting for inflation. In 1998, the average Major League Baseball team was worth about $194 million. That means that the expansion fees were only 67% or two-thirds of the average team value. So the last time MLB expanded, the barrier of entry was one-third lower than it is in 2021. So what does all this actually mean? It means Rob Manfred is playing hardball. Here's another point. It's not a real number. The $2.2 billion figure has not been made official or etched in stone. It's merely a leverage tactic. They're telling prospective cities to go after existing teams before you have any thoughts about capturing team number 31 or 32, or wait until Oakland and Tampa get off their ass and commit to new ballparks. Here's what Manfred actually said. If in fact MLB teams are worth an average 2.2 billion, I think that's kind of a lodestar in terms of where you would start in terms of evaluating expansion opportunity. The $2.2 billion figure expansion fee is just an estimate by Sportico. It's never been an official number put out there by MLB F***ing journalists, man. All of this underscores the basic fact that Rob Manfred is posturing. He's not opposed to MLB expansion. In fact, if he's smart, which I think he is, he'd be all for it. He's merely opposed to letting two of his franchises toil away in the rotting edifice of the Coliseum, or whatever you want to call Tropicana Field. So like Sean Kemp's Kraken shirt at the NHL expansion draft, the MLB 2 is about to stretch out. Took uh, Jonas Dinskoy. <laughs> Jonas Dinskoy. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have a second, let me tell you about the coffee company I partnered with, Benchwarmer Brew which delivers you extra flavor from my own custom blend. It's a light roast, so that means there's more caffeine and it is legit good coffee. You can get some from the link below. Plus, if you subscribe because you know how much coffee you drink, you can save money by having it delivered more frequently. Again, check it out from the link below and stay awake, my friends. I'm Five Points Vids and you made it to my next video.